The boogeyman is real. Ooh. Hi, everyone. Um, it's me, Grant, the movie and TV guy. I know what you guys are thinking. Where's the What If review? Where's the SNL review from last week? You're not going to get it till at least Saturday. I'm sorry. I will do it during the day. We're going to get two SNL reviews in one night. There you go. The Kim Kardashian one and um, the Rami Malek one. So, because tomorrow it's you season three all day long. All day long um, and then a review. So, that's the way it's going to work. Um, but that's not the review we have tonight. Um, sorry. Why am I late? Um, because insomnia is tough and it can kick your ass and it sure has this week so um bear with me um i promise you i will get it out to you guys soon but in the meantime um what are, what's the review then tonight well a movie um a pretty big movie uh movies and tv that we do here and the movie we're going to talk about tonight is halloween kills um, Halloween Kills is co-written and directed once again by David Gordon Green, who previously did the previous film, which is also just called Halloween, but it's actually, um, the 11th film in the series, this is number 12, it was, um, it did the Candyman thing of it's a sequel, that's also a reboot, uh, the last film, so it's just called Halloween, but it came out in 2018, um, and if you remember that film, um, it basically, um, uh, wiped the slate clean, of all but the first Halloween film, and maybe elements of Halloween 2, but not really. Um, it wasn't fully canonized anymore. But Jamie Lee Curtis came back as Laurie Strode, uh, the biggest badass in all of horror films, uh, Her Heroin Rise. Sorry, I'm a little tired. Um, and uh, where we last left, um, her and her uh, daughter Karen and granddaughter Allison... Um, played by Judy Greer and Andy, is it Matichak? Miss, I hope I got your name right. Andy Matichak. Okay, I'll say that's what it is. Um, who are both quite good in the film, um, where we last left them in Halloween 2018. Um, spoilers for the last movie, in case you want to know. Uh, they trapped Michael in the basement, lit the basement on fire, um, after Lori got stabbed in the stomach by Michael, they were taken away to safety, and the house was on fire, but you could hear the faint hint of <sighs> that Michael was still alive. Heavy breathing. Um, we pick up pretty much immediately afterwards, after a prologue in 1978 that shows the events of the earlier film from a new angle, um, involving, um, Officer Hawkins, played in flashback, um, in the earlier part of the film by Thomas Mann from Project X. That was kind of cool. Um, we pick up with, um, shortly thereafter with, um, after a, actually about a good, like 10 minutes, it takes a while to get to her, but we pick up, um, in the, um, car that's driving her to safety, um, to fix her stomach wound that same Halloween night in 2018. But believe it or not, Michael's still alive. He takes out the firemen who are coming to take down, you know, um, clear the house of the flame, uh, wastes them all as Michael Myers does, and now he's on a rampage. Uh, soon enough, a mob begins to form, including um, Tommy Doyle, played by Anthony Michael Hall, as well as Lindsay, played once again, reprising a role by Kyle Richards, reprising their role from the original Halloween from 1978. There were the two children that Lori babysat that night that Michael came home. And, um, it's time to, to uh, evil dies tonight. Um, but will Michael go down? Have you seen a Halloween movie? And how is this all going to set up the grand finale next October? Halloween ends. Well, you're going to have to check it out to find out. Cause I'm not spoiling it here. Okay. Um, I'm going to come right out with it. Um, those who don't know, cause I did not have a channel or a review platform before this. I have seen Halloween. I've seen all the Halloweens. I've seen Halloween 2018. Um, I loved it. I gave it four and a half stars. I would have if I did. I thought it was um, excellent. I thought it was a breath of fresh air. Um, I thought I loved the new characters. I really loved uh, Karen and Allison. I thought they were really good characters. Jamie Lee Curtis, of course, is she's Jamie Lee Curtis. She's always good. And I really dug David Gordon Green's approach. Does it carry over into Halloween Kills? A little and a little bit no. Um, I'm gonna have to say this movie. I enjoyed it. It's a pretty, but it's kind of like a minor disappointment, and I'll say why. 
one, it suffers from severe middle chapteritis. For those who don't know what that is, it's when you do a trilogy of movies. The middle chapter, in essence, unless you're something like The Dark Knight or Godzilla, or not Godzilla, The Godfather Part Two, rather, tends to be the weakest one because it's just kind of a preamble to the finale. It's kind of what this suffers from. And I think the biggest thing is, um, so let's just, I'm just going to have to break this down good and bad. Um, there are parts of this movie that are among the best in all of Halloween, and they're, but they are only parts of it. It's kind of one of those cases of things in it work, but they don't build up to a, a perfect whole. What I'll say is the acting is phenomenal across the board. Um, Jamie Lee Curtis is great. Um, it was nice seeing little Julian again. He had like a brief little cameo. I still feel kind of sad about the first one because I really liked Virginia Gardner. I kind of wish she had at least a cameo. I know she died. <laughs> Carolina Dean from Runaways, come on. But that was she also that was like one of my favorite elements of the first one. It's kind of bummer that they kind of just kind of go like, oh yeah, it happened. Bye. <laughs> the, the the dynamic between those two. But um, Michael Myers is a, is a, still an intimidating figure. I think once again it's the same actor who played him in '78, which is insane. Um, Judy Greer's always good. Andy Matichek, who's also quite good in the underrated film Son, um, is really really good in this as Allison. Jamie Lee Curtis is good. And there are some scenes that are not only funny, uh, but also kind of touching. There's a scene, a particular scene, I'm not going to say what it is, but you'll know when you see it between Tommy Doyle and Laurie Stroud in the hospital. There's something he tells her. It's like, oh, it's kind of nice. But, unfortunately, the biggest problem with this movie, I think, is one of tone. Now, if there was one thing that kind of kept Halloween 2018 from the top of the heat for me, it was some of the humor felt a little bit off. And that's a problem I think a lot of people have with 2018 is that I did, but it it was funny enough that I kind of didn't feel like it was totally off balance. This time it's totally off balance. You go from a scene of somebody cracking wise, like this um, this um, couple um, who live in the old Myers home, uh, this uh, gay couple played by, I think it's like Scott MacArthur and was it Michael McDonald from Mad TV, where they go from like the scene of them bantering to someone looking into a hospital room sobbing because their child or their friend has been brutally murdered by Michael Myers. There's, it's not really a... There are some deaths that seem to be played for laughs and don't at the same time. It's very, very strange. There are some well-earned laughs. Um, there's also... The, there are these kids in these movies who are kind of shithead little kids who do this prank that honestly is kind of brilliant involving uh, razor blades in the candy to sort of trick uh, the, the couple who lives in the Myers house. I'm like, that's kind of clever. And there are little things like that that really work. And I do appreciate, like in the last movie, that no one's really safe here more than ever in a Halloween movie that even sympathetic characters can die brutal deaths at the hands of Michael Myers. I kind of enjoy the kind of chutzpah of that. But the problem is, is that it just doesn't come together. And then at the end of it... A climax kind of starts, immediately stops, and then, same time next Halloween, it's over. And you're just kind of like, really? Like, Halloween 2018, it had a cliffhanger, but at least it had a kind of a full, it was a full movie when it ended. Because I don't think they intended to do sequels then. So it had some level of closure. This one really, the open ending really does kind of leave you feeling like the ending of the movie kind of never happens. It's just kind of like... We'll see you next, uh, this time next year for Halloween Ends. It's like, and I'm gonna go back. I want to see how this wraps up, of course. I, I gotta see it, but, like, it just kind of felt like a long trailer. And, like, the ending of the movie, a lot of the endings also in the trailer for this movie, which was also very odd. Like, the last line of the movie's in the trailer. It just felt like a lot of it was, there's a great Halloween movie in here. I liked seeing Anthony Michael Hall. It's always nice seeing him. It was nice seeing Kyle Richards, but this was a minor disappointment. However, one thing this movie gets right, the kills. I will say this, for a movie called Halloween Kills, the kills are very creative. There's one involving um, a pistol and a car door in particular that was genuinely darkly funny and very well executed. But the problem is, it's just after kind of the high that Halloween 2018 had, this was a little bit of a, of a sloping down, unfortunately. But... Um, I saw it with a nice audience. It was kind of fun hanging out in a packed theater with people on a Thursday night, a rainy Thursday night here in Edwardsville, and watching a Halloween movie. It was fun, but um, I almost feel like I shouldn't score this until Halloween ends come out. So what I'll say is, 
I know I sound down on it. I'll give it three and a half stars. This is a matinee. Man, this was a disappointment. I mean, this was a I'll step down. I really hope Halloween Ends delivers. And I will give them credit. They set it up in a way without spoiling it that it will be kind of interesting to see how they actually end the story. Because the way they put it together is like, okay, they give us some new rules and it's like, oh, another thing I have a problem with. It kind of wants to have a message, and I'm kind of cool with that, but it doesn't really follow through about mob mentality. That's the other thing. It kind of says, mob mentality is bad. Uh, it hurts people, but then, like, once the chips are down, mob mentality rules! Let's kill people. And it's just like, what? I don't know. It, I kind of, it's kind of at a cross, because I love David Gordon Green, but it seems like, does you, do you want it to be George Washington with gore, or do you want it to be Pineapple Express with more gore? Like, what David Gordon Green, t what type of David Gordon Green movie are we getting out of Halloween Kills? And it doesn't really ever decide. It's kind of, yeah, this was a disappointment. Um, but I'll give it three and a half stars. Trailer trash, none, weirdly enough. Uh, the projector didn't work. So we didn't get trailers, which is a bummer because I thought we were going to get that Scream 5 trailer and I was going to see it with an audience. I guess we'll have to wait. But um, I have seen it. Of course I've seen it. I'm excited for it. I'm Sydney Prescott. Of course I have a gun. But, um,. Yeah, we didn't get trailers. Um, was there trauma? Nah, nah, there wasn't. Although they do do... What I really love, though, is about these movies, they do the old-fashioned John Carpenter font. I thought that was kind of cool. And opening credits with, like, the pumpkin. I like that. Um, but, yeah. Yeah, this is a bit of a disappointment. But three and a half stars. All right, um, we'll be back tomorrow night for you Season 3. I will definitely be doing a video on that. I am pumped. I have been looking forward to this for literally almost two years. The last season aired in December, I think, of 2019. So it was, yeah, I'm excited. Um, and then we're going to talk of that. We're going to talk SNL last week's and this week's. We're going to talk What If. And then um, Monday, we got The Last Duel. Monday night, later Monday night. And then next Friday's Dune. The Thursday after that is Last Night in Soho. Um, My Hero Academia, World Heroes Mission, the movie. And uh, then Eternals on November 4th. And I don't... Um... Oh, and we're definitely... It's far away, far off. The Beatles get back. Yes, we are reviewing that, but I'm going to wait till it actually is over. I'm going to, after the part three airs. But yes, we are, I am so pumped for that movie. Miniseries, whatever you want to call it. All right. Um, but that will all be next time. And until next time, I'm Grant, the movie and TV guy. I see it all. And I'm happy to share it with you. Um, so uh, uh, I love you all. I appreciate you all. I really do. Uh, I'm glad you guys have been bearing with me. It's just been a rough week. Uh, but I want to get this review out to you, so um, I love you all truly. I appreciate you all truly. Um, I love you all class dismissed. I live 3,000. Be kind to one another. Um, and if you like this video, um, give it a like if you want to. Give it a subscribe if you want to. Get a bell if you want to. I don't know what it does, but that's what it to do. Um, if you want to find me elsewhere, um, reviews, lists, and other fun stuff, including my ongoing 31 movies of Halloween, you can check me out on litterbox.com at Grant the Movie TV Guy. And if you want to go into uh, the comments and go like, hey, Grant, what's up? Oh. Uh, on the boards, I'm there, and I'll say what's up. So, yeah, hit me up. All right. And uh, go check out Halloween Kills. I think it is worth seeing. It's on Peacock, too. Maybe it's better to watch at home, although if you can get an audience like mine, maybe go with friends. This is a bit of a disappointment. But, uh, yeah, thank you all. Have a good night. See you soon. Bye.